A pathogen is just a fancy word for a disease-causing organism. And there's a few different examples of them you should know, like virus, bacteria, protoctus, and fungi. And you should have an idea of an example of each one. Flu is one of the most famous examples of a virus. Cholera is an example of bacteria, as well as things like E. coli, which causes food poisoning. Malaria is a protoctus. That's the one that people most easily forget are the protoctists. And then fungi are things like athlete's foot. In a transmissible disease, this is a disease in which the pathogen can be passed from one host to another. That's just a fancy way of saying it can be spread. It's a disease that can spread between things. So there are different ways that it can be spread or transmitted. It could be direct transmission, and that would be things like contact between people when they touch, mixing of bodily fluids, that sort of thing. And then also indirect methods, and this would be via contaminated foods, via animals. Some things might be airborne or they might be spread through water, this type of thing. We've got something called vectors, and a vector is an animal that carries a pathogen from one host to another. A good example is mosquitoes. There are certain types of mosquitoes which can spread malaria. Uh, you know that bats can spread rabies as well as other animals can spread that as well. A lot of different ways to reduce the transmission of disease. The first and most obvious one is hygienic food preparation. Obviously, wash your hands before touching your food or wear gloves if in the food industry, if you're working with food, wearing gloves would often be a requirement. Keep your hair out of the food. That's a good way to spread things around. So keeping your hair out of it is a good way to, pre to prevent transmission. Don't cough or sneeze around the food. Keep animals away. And that includes flies. Flies are really good at spreading disease. Keep food cold because cold conditions are not very good for bacteria and other microorganisms to grow. And also keep raw meat separate because raw meat is a, a good location to harbor lots of pathogens. And when the meat gets cooked, then the the pathogens get killed. But if that raw meat has been kept away from has been kept next to something that is then going to be eaten raw, then obviously the pathogens might be on that raw food and can still be spread. Another method is personal hygiene. A lot of oil and dirt accumulates on the skin throughout the day. And obviously that means that pathogens are also going to get trapped within that. Also, sweat encourages bacteria. So washing regularly is a way of reducing transmission. Next would be waste disposal. Obviously, rats and dogs and all that sort of thing are attracted to food waste. And it's a really, really good place for bacteria to multiply. All of that leftover food waste is potential nutrients and potential fuel for bacteria. So well-designed landfill sites are essential and also things like taking out the rubbish regularly from the kitchen, not leaving it to build up for too long, that sort of thing. The other thing is sewage treatment. Obviously, toilet and kitchen waste contain quite a lot of pathogens. If somehow sewage managed to enter drinking water, that's a really obvious pathway for transmission. So correct treatment of sewage is essential to make sure that the, the water that leaves, the dirty water that leaves, isn't then, um, isn't then going to be able to enter the water that somebody consumes. Let's look at the sort of exam question you might get on this. How about describe and explain the ways in which a pathogen can be transmitted from one host to another? And that's a four mark question. First off, let's look at the command terms. First off, we've got to describe and then we've got an explain. So there are two requirements in the answer. And let's look at it in that context. First of all, pathogens can be transmitted through the air. That's the description. Next, a person can breathe the pathogen in via the lungs. That's the explanation that goes with that description. Next one, it could be transmitted via the blood. Let's explain that. In blood transfusions, blood-borne pathogens can transfer from the body of the first host into the body of the new host in the blood. Next one, let's describe that it can be transmitted via contaminated food. And then explain that, for example, pathogens are transferred to food after a cook doesn't wash their hands and the pathogens are ingested when the food is eaten. Assuming that there's a mark available for each describe and each explain, and you can see we've given six potential marking points there.